So we're in Chiswick, we're in uh, Ski Easy, and we've come here to demo the new Carve 2. Two problems really with Carve 1. The first was that we were groomer focused, and the second was that we needed to be inside the boot. So that meant that you had an additional layer of thickness, and we worked really hard to make it as thin as possible. It's only three millimeters thick. But if you have a tight racing boot or a plug boot, it actually can create discomfort. So we need a way to make Carve 2 all terrain, as accurate as Carve 1, and to not use an insole. When we were developing Carve 2, we rethought everything from the ground up to make it as simple as possible for the user. And the challenge for us as an engineering team was to put everything that's amazing about this product into this small device that just clips on the outside of the boot. And with no faff, with no calibration, with no insulation, you can just go skiing, clip and go. Now the great thing about Carve 1, we know exactly where it is on the boot. So we know it's under your foot and pointing forwards. And Carve 2, we obviously don't know where it is at all. So the challenge that we had was, can we determine automatically, without any user intervention at all, where this is on the ski boot? To help us demonstrate how Carve 2 actually works is Lena, ski instructor and manager here at Ski Easy. Lena has kindly agreed to show us how to ski on this moving map. And we're gonna look at how Carve can detect where on the boot the device is, and with Motion AI, give you a full representation of exactly what your boots are doing as you ski. So we've got uh, these Carve 2 units, and we have them paired to this uh, iPad, which is showing on the screen. So this is a representation of the boot, and you can see right now when I move this around, you can see uh, that the motion sensing is being picked up and the boot's moving, but it doesn't, it's not on a boot, and it doesn't know, Carve doesn't know where it is on the boot. And when we strap this to Lena's ski boots, for the first few seconds while she's skiing, th these boots will be all over the place. So if you put that on... The work that we've done over the last year has been developing an algorithm that through machine learning and using all our previous data set can automatically determine where the units have been placed on the boot. Let's do it. So yeah, you can see here with Lena's uh, skiing that this still looks a bit weird. Okay, there we go, so it just updated. It updates every 10 seconds. We're pretty bang on. It's taken maybe 20, 30 seconds, and then we've got a perfect representation. So as she's skiing, we're constantly calibrating where the unit is on the boot, and then forming this visualization of the ski boot. And this is basically how Carve sees the world. With Carve 2, we want it to be able to get anywhere. So it can be on the side of the boot, it can be on the front of the boot, it can be upside down. You can also adjust the strap at any point during skiing. We don't know before time where it is and we don't want to have a fixed location where you have to put it because that would be painful for the user but also inaccurate because if you made it slightly wrong, we're going to get bad data. So we now know the position of Carve 2 on the boot. And that means we can get all of the angles, all of the edge similarity, and all of the acceleration, deceleration as you go through the turn. And that means we can build up the full ski IQ, which is actually our most accurate ski IQ ever. But the next challenge was to get Carve to work in all terrains. So on the bumps, in the powder, and even when you have variable terrain. To do this, we had to train an AI model with many examples of different snow surfaces. We did that by collecting thousands of video sessions of people skiing with Carve and label what snow surface it was skied on. The second step was to try and increase the scale. We needed loads of data. The scale really matters in AI. So to do this, we turned to our users. And we asked them to tag each segment they've skied with the snow surface. So we've got over 2.4 million turns tagged by our users and we've got 11 and a half thousand video sessions that have been labelled by our ambassadors. What we did is we used all this data with uh, the known service types and we trained a machine learning model on that data. So the, the model learns what data in powder looks like 
and it learns what data in moguls looks like. Yeah, how to ski in early season. We're excited to say that Carv is now more accurate on any terrain than it was on groomers last year. The final thing we had to do was to measure the balance and the pressure with the carve unit on the top of the boot. Previously with the carve one sensor, we were able to measure the pressure underneath. The big breakthrough we had in solving how to handle not having pressure anymore is that we started using our acceleration data. Dana, if you could start doing a snowplow turn for me, we're going to show you how we measure technique without pressure sensor take the, the balance. This is quite a gentle turn. She is controlling her speed with a wedge. So we can see the boots rotating, but it's quite a static turn. And if you look at her upper body in particular, there isn't much movement forwards or backwards. So Lena, if you could progress into a, a faster turn. As you speed up, we're going to see Lena start to make a more active forward movement to keep her balanced over her skis. And what's happening is at the end of one turn, her skis are gripping into the carpet and then slowing down. And then this enables her to move her upper body and her hips over her skis in transition. Carve can detect the acceleration and deceleration of your feet as you work to maintain your balance on snow. By measuring the size, timing and smoothness of these movements, Carve 2 can measure your balance at the beginning and throughout the turn. Here we can see your raw data and we basically measure your skiing by converting this into your metrics. Here we can see your acceleration along the length of the ski. So we can see at the start in your snowplow turns, you're not actively moving forward to maintain your balance and we can see this in the data. But as you progress into your carving turns, we start to see these spikes. These show how you are moving your feet underneath you in order to maintain your balance. By pulling your feet behind you at the start of the turn, moving your weight onto the ball of your foot, then smoothly moving your weight back into the arch and heel of your foot, you're able to maintain balance. Carve can measure these movements, which we call early forward movement and mid-turn balance. Yes, that's exactly what I could feel, that during my snowplow turns my feet stay static underneath me and uh, the higher the intensity, the more I go into a carving turn, then my feet do move forwards and backwards a lot, creating a figure of eight, which is fantastic to see where exactly that acceleration and deceleration happens. Carve 2 really is a step change for us. It allows us to remove the inserts, to measure the snow surface you're on, and to measure the movement of the upper body using the acceleration of the feet. Because we've got Carve 2 on each foot, and we use Carve's Motion AI to be able to determine exactly what your boot's doing, we can measure the angles, the rotations, the converging and diverging of your skis through every turn. And we then use that to give you technique analysis and coaching. It unlocks Carve for so many users, and we think it makes Carve even more powerful for our existing ones.